run into a problem. Can I, can I steal your blender? <laughs> what do you want it for? <laughs> and I took it apart, the electronic and the components. It's taken apart, it's missing the motor. And Pete. Whoa, we just got like 60 <laughs> we made a toast. <laughs> Smaller coil. This is really exciting, guys. Like, really exciting. And by the way, the toes. So I went back to the junkyard, bought an old air purifier, and took it apart, the electronic and the components, and I found wire, specifically on the fan motor, right here. So we're going to use that, and we're going to make ourselves more coils. Teaching time. This is how a lot of companies fool the consumers. They use really small wires, and you're going to see in a second why using small wires is not good. Uh, it has really high resistance, but no tolerance to heat. So they run a lot of current for a very, very short amount of time, like a duty cycle of 1%, for example. And then they get a lot of woomph out of it, but nothing really that makes any sense. You'll see why. So now I'm at 6% duty cycle, making 25 gauze out of this little coil, because I tested a bunch of small coils before I made the final coils for the cheap mat. And then I burned them. You can see when it smokes, that's because the it gets too hot, the insulation on it just burns. And then it shorts itself and then nothing works anymore. So I got 100 wrap on this one, and watch this. Got 76 gauze, the second go around I'll get 81 gauze, and that's how they boast big numbers tiny little amount of time exposure and then a little bit of copper but this thing has no bubble around it like there's no woomphla coming out of it like this goes nowhere and yeah i killed another one right there i killed like six or seven of them smoked them all then i made some bigger one after i tested a bunch of the small one and i was ready for the the big test um I came up with the magical numbers and yes, burned the end off and then I soldered all the wires in between and as you notice too, they're not taped. And here's the moment you've all been waiting for. I pushed and pushed and pushed that small coils until I burned it and yes, I made what you know what I made. Oh, we made a toast. <laughs> yeah, we made a toast. All right, I'm about to find out if I'm gonna melt my mat, blow something. And all the pre-tests I did with the small coil turned out to be good. So I went out testing the output of the gauze of every coil. And while I was at it, decided to do some testing. So I increased the duty cycle and I stopped bending coils to see what I was going to get. Like you can see that bending like quite a bit. Now the magical thing was, is it did not reduce the uh, amount of gauze I was getting by the coil, but um, the radius of it was getting smaller so it gave me the idea to create a bubble with a dome and then start making funny shapes on those coils like a D shape, a football shape and then I documented the whole thing and I made a cheap Excel spreadsheet to show the results. This is the double coil and then overlap. As long as the double coil, the north and the north is together then they would add to each other. But uh, the D shape and the football shape, they kept their strength, but they didn't have any, they lost their radius quite rapidly. And then the overlapping was the same thing, it just didn't really, as long as the both norths were the same, everything went fine. What you're gonna see next is a reenactment of what happened. I was working on my desk here and I did a stupid thing. As you saw in the video, I was using these plates to put my coil on it because I knew they were getting hot and burning stuff and I didn't want to burn my desk. And I disconnected the coil and I was working with the ZK and I put it right on the plate. 
and the camera was at up here my gopro was there there is no footage of it so i decided for the purpose of this to reenact it so there it is The mat is done. It's a pretty slick little unit. If you look at this, this is a laptop power supply and inside the power supply um, it comes with like the computer plugged in that you just need to cut and then water back into the ZK PP2 like this here. Comes with his own power plug-in that you can plug directly in. So the electrical component of it is minimal. Go back and watch the video how to make coil. That was the same thing we did here. Uh, if you don't have any high speed instrument, you're basically just gonna have to test stuff at random until it works, right? Until it doesn't get too hot. Start with the duty cycle really low. Now, if you guys wanna know more about duty cycle and what that affects, let me know in the comment. I mean, there's about 150 subscribers we're at now. So if I get 50 comments telling me, right, that you guys want to hear about duty cycle and adjust this and tinker down and see me blowing stuff up, just let me know. 50 comments, I will give you all the rough footage you ever want. So, the pros and cons of this. Pros. It's cheap as hell. I mean, the only thing really we had to buy was our ZK PP2K. Well, PP2 in this case. Uh, if you buy uh, the one with the case already, they're a little more. And you can just glue them on on this. It just doesn't fit very well. Okay, it's adjustable. They're the same quality, the same thing. They're tough as hell. Don't ever buy the ZK PP1. It doesn't have the wound, like the amperage. To go through this you'll blow it up right away the two is good up to eight amps and then we got our coils in there now i want to talk to you guys about the coils i got this question all the time people ask me oh you matt how many gauze does it make how many gauze does it make it's not about gauze guys it's about the way it's projected right i mean you saw i got the tiny little coil with uh, a few wraps, run it super, super low duty cycle, and I was getting 80 gauze out of it, right? The mat that I build makes about 50 gauze, right? And that's based on all the research paper and stuff, and that's what I like to use anyway. I use much bigger gauge wire, so that way we can run 35, 40% duty cycle well within spec. Even at 100% duty cycle, full blast, I've never burned one of those. And I left them on for like ever and run like just a single one, try to burn them, and I didn't. So this got good uh, heat temperature resistance. So you got good coils, bigger gauge, and then lots of wraps. As to this day, I still find this is the perfect balance. They're rigid, like they don't bend easy. Look at this. Like there's nothing to it. Um, really hard to tape too, because there's no structure to it. And it just kind of goes wonky on you, which is terrible, but it is what it is. This, another pro of this would be that if you want to sink your teeth into building a PAMF, and you've never done it before, and then you want to see if this is something you can do, right? Just go find yourself an old transformer, an old motor, like a fan motor that doesn't work anymore. Just take it apart and then find a way to take the wire out of it and then make yourself some coils. And then my advice is to make uh, two coils. Make one with like 50 wraps. Let's just take a number at random. Make a 50 wrap, make, make like two or three of 50 wraps and then Put them together like this and then you just put them together and then you basically wire them together like that put them perfectly on top and then tape tape them again and do that with a third one and then put all the ends together tape them together so literally what you did right 
you just created yourself with small wire something that has bigger wire that is the exact same thing except we did it for free because we just repurposed some wire so wire them together something like this and then that becomes one coil and now you're gonna have if this coil makes 10 gauze, this coil will make 10 gauze, and this coil will make 10 gauze. When you put them together, you'll be making 30 so much gauze. They do add up together that way, okay? They feed into each other. The only caveat to that is, and this is really important, if this coil, the north is up this way and the south is down this way, and this one is the opposite, when you put them together, they cancel each other out. So if you grab your little magnet and you put it there, and then the magnet vibrates, you're doing good. If the magnet, magnet doesn't vibrate, then you're, it's no good. Then you know that's the right direction. Put the other one on it, do the same test, and then you got it. Maybe we'll make a video on that test too if you wanna see more detail about this, let me know in the comment. If I get 50 comment, 50 on one topic, I will make a video on it, I promise you that. You know my word. Okay, let's talk about the bubble. When I put my handy dandy cone on it, and I take my measurement, so I get the measurement in the same place all the time, right? You get a nice even dome, those big coils. They do a good reflection. So maybe one day we'll have the money to get some actual software. And then um, I, I know the equipment I'd like to get, but it's thousands and thousands of dollars. And then I can run, I can run a probe on rail around the this and then all the data gets mapped out into a uh, computer and then you get a 3d rendering of it the probe is even bluetooth that connects to your laptop that's just amazing stuff and they use that in school to teach physics and everything else so like the kids and the young adult they can get a visual uh, view of it this tiny little coil here i got 80 some odd gauze out of it and this is like crap the way I got 80 gauze out of it was to run a lot of current that would burn this thing if it was like constantly on and run it for a microsecond. And then you look here and then you go with your probe right next to the wire and I would get like 80 gauze. But it's the same thing as Bosch as an awesome reflector for your lights. So you get like 100 watt light bulb in it and you get like a ton of uh, view out there because they're really well built and efficient. And then you get a Chinese uh, $15 reflector and you put like a 500 watt bulb in it and you don't get half the quality of light that you do with the Bosch reflectors. This is basically a Chinese reflector and this is a Bosch reflectors. I mean, it's just, you can't, like, you can't compare them no matter what you do. You're getting noises, you're getting all kinds of stuff in there. Now, this particular mat, if we were to fold it and bend it, the coils would change shape, which we show in the video when, when the coils are change shape, they still work, but you lose that uniformity again, right? So I would probably use this on the dog bed. That would be okay. I left it on all night and it worked fine. So let me know, let me know. I cannot emphasize that enough. Let me know what you think of this project if you want to see more of it. Another thing that would be interesting that I thought you guys might like, <clears throat> that'd be fun to do. Let's say you build one of those mat, you try it on it, and then you got some results and it's working for you. And you're like, okay, now how do, I know I can do this. I got a lot of the parts already. How do I make it better, right? So we can take this to the next level and the next level and the next level. So if that's something that interests you again, let me know. I cannot emphasize that enough. Let me know. I do not read mind. I have no idea. Um, the good news is, guys, there's only 100 plus some of us that watch these videos. So this is the time to engage. Um, if down the road we have like five, 6,000 people, um, your voice won't be as loud as it is right now, right? So uh, use that power. Talk to me. Talk to me. Don't be shy. Okay. That's a lot for today. 
So we'll leave it at that. Um, next week, we're gonna do a video a little bit different than usually. First of all, I have no video editing machine anymore. I'm using my phone and my old laptop, so I'm going back to basic. I am building a bipolar uh, DC wave, square wave. Um, I've done some tests, I blew a bunch of stuff up. Um, I'm gonna show you guys the footage of it. I'm gonna organize it somewhat in line. I will document the, the, the process. And you guys gonna see me screaming like a schoolgirl when I uh, blew a bunch of stuff up. Uh, I'm learning along the way, just like you guys. It's a lot of fun. Um, like I said, I have a strong background, but not in this field of science, right? Um, so this is new to me as much as uh, I hate to say it. But I'm having fun doing it with you guys. So next week's video, we're doing a bipolar square wave using hardcore solenoid and my oscilloscope that I'm still learning how to use too. Ha! 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 Then we killed it. It still runs. And I'll prove it to you guys. We'll plug it in right now. I like to play tricks on her all the time. She's a really, really good woman. And she deals with all my smoke that I let go of the electronics. And my dog ate the other half and I'm left just with that. And yeah, it's been dry.